one FM AM eleven sixty and WCCSradio.com. Well, yes, Jack is here, but that's not the main reason. Believe it or not, there's someone even a bigger star than you in the studio today, Jack. Absolutely. They're all bigger. <laughs> <laughs> IUP football coach Paul Tortorella joins us this morning, and our conversation is brought to you by Marcus and Mac. Voted best personal injury law firm in the best of Indiana County contest. Marcus and Mac, a law firm representing injured people. Coach, good morning. Morning. It's good, good to be in here. Nice, nice warm day. Yeah. <laughs> Sun's out. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, I, we'll take that now. Yeah, I, I we'll just talked that. to that lady down in Dallas on the last segment. She says, yeah, we're going to hit 80. <laughs> um, yeah, not quite here, though. But that doesn't matter. You're thinking football. And right. that, Some of us have already now. hit 80. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, too. Hey, Coach, uh, the letter of intent signing day the other day. Um, it, it's interesting to watch the way college football evolves now because uh, letter of intent signing day means more for you uh, after the first of the year than it does for the Division One programs. They try to la- wrap their guys up in December. Well, yeah, that pretty much they're done in December, most of the Division Ones. Uh, and then, you know, they're they're heavy in the portal. So it does open up uh, more availability for high school kids for us, um, and and that's why we do the bulk of our recruiting in December and January. We were we were actually done two weeks early. Oh, yeah. um, we didn't even have anybody come in the last two weekends. So with Division One being early, uh, with the portal in regards to Division One's taking a lot of portal guys. Uh, there's a lot of high school kids out there that are you know, looking at Division two schools now. Yeah, and I thought it would might probably be an advantage to you now. Well, it absolutely is. Uh, you know, I'm not a real proponent of the portal. Um, the thing that you worry about is losing guys to the portal. We we, we took a couple guys mid-year uh, at positions where we needed guys, you know, right away. Uh, we don't want to go that route. You know, I know there's some teams in our league that might, Take twelve to fifteen guys out of the portal. We're not we're not going to go that that route. We'll we'll still con, you know consider uh, the high school recruiting the the lifeblood of the program. Jack, you probably already have started uh, working on the pronunciations, right? Oh, I'm I'm practicing all the time. Yeah, I worked on you know Tortorella's name here. Coach, yeah, for a couple or, years. A couple <laughs> years it was. <laughs> Tort, you you only have uh, you have five transfers coming in. You. Have, if, unless you added somebody, right. 17 recruits for the high school. Right. If you had to rank, uh, give them a grade, uh, your grade of A, B, or C, as to how many you got, how many you wanted, what would you give yourself? Well, I, I think we'd probably if I was a stern professor, I'd, I'd go give a B. Um, you know, the high school kids, you, you don't really know. I mean, you think you do, but you don't really know. I mean, we've had guys here that nobody wanted and became great players, and other guys we've re- recruited like crazy, and they they never really panned out to 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 be what, what they what we thought they would be. Um, you know a little bit more about the uh, guys you bring in from the portal mid year. That the philosophy that we have with portal guys, we we want guys that have played in games. You know, because that's something that we we can evaluate uh guys that have never played in games no matter where they're from and and really we don't even deal with division one transfers anymore because they're just going to go to another division one they don't have to sit out a year um so you know we we look more for the division two guys that have played a lot of football and had success um and and that's what we kind of you know put our finger on in mid-year guys mm-hmm. that have played a lot of football had success maybe we're not in a great situation uh either with coaches changing or not having great seasons and you know wanting to have a chance to win and so forth so uh that's how it worked out this year well the two key guys would be linebacker out of millersville garrett cox right uh great player and uh, the running back three years at bloomsburg caleb monaco we Saw him in the last game, which IUP played. He has one year left, right? Well, each of them. Each have of them one. have one year but left. There, there you go. Just what you're talking about. Well, yeah, the Cox is a three-year starter. You know, first team All-American. You know, whatever they deem all of that. Uh, but he he was probably one of the better players in the conference, obviously, uh, on that side. And then Monaco. You know, when you play running back. 
you know, durability is a big part of it. And then he played in 32 out of 33 games. He only missed one game, and he runs it, he catches it, he returns it. He has close to 4,000 yards total offense in his career, so he's been very productive. Cox, I, I don't really know offhand how many tackles, but it's got to be close to 300, yeah. if not more. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that, that both of them very, very productive. Yeah. Um, and they have to be if you're going to take a guy for just one year. Now, you have a stable of running backs. Now, Monaco comes in if you haven't lost anybody, which I understand you haven't. Uh, you also had Randy Washington. Now, mm-hmm. w- he had to be out all year because of an injury. Where are you looking at him in the in the fall or in the spring? Well, we're probably going to move younger uh, to defense and take a look at him at safety. Um, Randy's still out with the torn hamstring. So, you know, the running back position, I mean, obviously you've been around a long time. There's been years here where we've started out with three or four running backs and you know, by the end of the year, even on good teams, we, we got one or two left, you know, because they, they get banged up, that's for sure. So you can never have enough running backs, but you can never pass up a guy with that kind of production and durability. Uh, and, he, you know, he's very versatile. He'll help you in the return game. He could go out and play slot. You know, he's a good receiver. And then, obviously, he, he's had a bunch of carries at running back. You know. How about the, the new guys, offense? Uh, a lot of offensive linemen, four offensive linemen. The guy that stands out is Pierre Cannon, Woodland Hills, six seven three forty. You guys, the coaches have talked about him in the vein of Leander. Well, Jordan. if you look at the body type, it's very similar to yeah. Leander. Um, physically, the kid's a specimen. I mean, I think if the portal wasn't in effect and this was – you know, back recruiting the old days, somebody in Division One would have taken a chance on this guy mm-hmm. just on body type alone and his skills. Uh, you know, he's only played football for two years, um, so it'll be a year or two to get him ready to play. Obviously, but uh, I, I, you know, you couldn't pass up that type of potential. Uh, you brought in a couple of wideouts. Uh, anybody specifically there? I know we. We haven't seen these guys on right. our level yet, but well, again, production. Uh, uh, Gamigliano had the most catches in the WPIL. Kid from South Fayette, right? Mm-hmm. Holmes, the receiver from the central part of the state, had I believe twenty touchdowns. You know, during the season, mm-hmm. uh, very athletic, really good basketball player. So uh, we need, you know we've gotten older at the position, so we need to recruit a couple uh, wide outs, you know, in this class to, to get our numbers up. You also got a uh, wide out, Eli Lingenfelder. Was at St. Francis. He has four years eligibility. Right. He played at Central Martinsburg. Right. He was at uh, St. Francis for a semester, and he's now here mid-year. Yep. How about the quarterback you brought in or are going to from mm-hmm. Mannheim Central? Zach Hahn, he's not a big kid, six feet, 190. I watched some video on him. He can really scramble and looks like he's got a pretty good arm, too. Yeah, I mean, he, he the, you know, he's six foot. Like, that's, that's where, where the, uh, hang up is. Mm-hmm. And, and it, rightfully so. Uh, you know, if you, if you're not a good, if you're not a really good athlete, it's very hard to play quarterback at six foot. He's a really good athlete. He does a lot of his work outside the pocket. Um, but you know, production again, he threw for 2,600 yards and I don't know, over 30 touchdowns with only a couple interceptions. His team was really good. Uh, the quarterback at that high school before him is the starting quarterback at Kutztown as a redshirt freshman. Oh, uh, Novak. Novak. Yes. So, uh, there's some petty pedigree there at the high school, you know, in regards to, uh, what has happened after leaving that high school. Um, but, we, you know, we we weren't really looking hard for a quarterback, but we just felt like this kid's been so productive and uh, is very athletic that, that he would be a guy that we could come in here and develop. Mm-hmm. How about on the defensive side? I see you've got uh, three D linemen listed, a uh, defensive end, um, a linebacker, and three D backs. Uh, maybe give me a little – perspective well we were really happy with the two defensive we're happy with all of them but the two defensive ends uh goodwin 
from Westchester, uh, Henderson, I believe. He's 6'5", 240, very long body, good pass rusher. Uh, Walker from West Mifflin. He, he really could play tight end. He's a, he's a good tight end on offense, but we, we like him at defensive end. Mm-hmm. Uh, an inside Don guy, Wysocki, very productive, not the biggest guy, but big enough. <clears throat> we got a linebacker from DeMatha Catholic. We usually don't recruit outside the state, um, but he's a really good student and a good football player from a great, you know, he's playing with like 10 other guys on defense that are Division I players. And in, in Antonio league, Green? Yes. And the uh, league they play in, there's Division One players all over the field. So uh, we recruited him, and then we recruited three defensive backs, <clears throat> two safeties, both from WPIL. Uh, O'Neal from Westinghouse, who's a lot like Darius Bruce. Uh, you know, he was coached by Dante Green, obviously. Mm-hmm. Uh, Scott, the, the safety from Steel Valley, tore his ACL. Um, late in the year, had a great year, uh, probably would have been more heavily recruited if he didn't get hurt. So we felt like we could bring him in and redshirt him, and he'll obviously be ready in a year. And then there's a corner from uh, St. Joe's Prep, uh, Devon Willie, who's who's a, a really good high school corner playing, again, at a school, probably the best school in the, in the state, obviously. Yeah. They won the 6A state championship. Yeah. Uh, let's see what else. Oh, yes, uh, I wanted to bring it up about uh, Karst Hunter, um, how he's doing here. Mm-hmm. He's, uh, you know, different year. Last year, came in late, got hurt, all that sort of thing. I understand he's been working, and uh, how, how's he been? Yeah, he's been great in our off-season program. Uh, they throw a little bit on their own. You know, he got here, what, uh, July? just a little bit. Yeah, he got here in July, so he's only been here – you know, six months, so to speak, seven months. So now he's starting to get, you know, real feel for things. Um, you know, at this time last year, he hadn't even committed to us yet. So, you know, his first year was a little up and down. Uh, I think part of the issue was he was playing with a lot of new guys. You know, it's 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 a lot easier if you're the only new guy and everybody else around you on offense has been there. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. we, we played with five new starters that weren't even in the program uh, last year. So, and and most of them came in, in August. So that was a, a, a thing that uh, probably held them back also. Mm-hmm. But now he's, he's looking to take on a leadership role. I think the last two games that he got to play after the injury were huge. Uh, he looked like a different player. Uh, maybe, you know, watching for three and a half games was the best thing to happen to him. Don? Well, yeah. we're almost out of time. Okay, but yeah. I, I did want to ask you, Coach, about, you know, particularly we talk about a guy that's six seven and 340 pounds. When you get guys uh, coming in from high school, uh, particularly along the line and particularly offensive line, I know your coaching staff looks at him, the training staff looks at him and says, okay, this guy is – Here's this guy with this body. There's that guy with this body. We need to add weight and muscle to him. We need to maybe subtract some from him. We need to move it all around. Mm-hmm. Your coaches must look at this recruiting list and say, man, I just can't wait to get my hands on him. Well, that's part of it, you know, because we are a developmental program. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, when you look at our great teams, we, we're usually playing with a lot of seniors that have been in the program the whole time. So when we get a guy – you know, we're not into stars. If a guy comes in as a two star, we got to get him to be a three and four star before he's finished here. We yeah. can't get, let him stay the same. So, a lot of these high school kids that we recruit, we're looking at developing and what are they going to be two years from now? You know, what are they going to yeah. be three years from now? Uh, you know, we did a good job getting some good offensive linemen uh, that were productive, other than, and, and Pierce was productive, but he just hasn't played a lot of football. Um, you know, we got two offensive linemen from Central Catholic. They've got to have the body type. Okay. Mm-hmm. You can't recruit a six foot, 240 pound offensive lineman. It, it, it just won't work no matter how good you get them. But, uh, uh, Gus Bryan's another guy from out near Philadelphia, offensive lineman. He was, in our mind, the best offensive lineman that we had on our recruiting board. Um, so between him, the two, uh, Kids from Central, Fuchs, and uh, Shovelin, they, they were really good players. Again, 
on a really good football team that won a lot of games from a great program. I think that's the one thing you'll see. Those guys are really e- easier to develop because they're ready when they get here. Yeah. They're used to how to practice. They're, they understand what winning's all about. And I think if you look at our list of high school kids, uh, I don't really know if there's a, a guy on that list that comes from a school that wasn't a really good program and won a lot of games. Yeah. Shaping them up, and uh, we'll we'll get to watch the results of all. First that. three games are away. We're going to be on the road, and <laughs> and um, at Ashland, September five, huh? Yeah, Thursday, Thursday night. You know that'll be a battle again, like we've had with them. Great the series, four years that we've played them, three regular season, and and one in the playoffs. So yeah, great series. It'll be a really good game. Tord, thanks a lot. Appreciate you coming in. No problem. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, Coach. Thanks. It Thanks, is Todd. the voice of Indiana County. It's WCCS 101.1 FM, AM 1160, and WCCSradio.com.